Collecting data. Today there's two state standards that go along with our lesson. Recognize the purposes of and differences among sample surveys, experiments, and observational studies. The second one, identify potential sources of bias in statistical studies. Your success criteria, identify types of sampling methods in statistical studies, analyze methods of collecting data, and be able to describe bias in sampling and in survey questions. Now, there are several vocab today, so make sure you read over these as you put these in your notes, but they're not difficult, but there are a lot of different terms that you need to be familiar with. So write these down, read through them a few times, and hopefully they will be pretty easy. The first one, a random sample. Each member of a population has an equal chance of being selected. Self-selected, as the name implies, members of a population can volunteer to be in the sample. So self-selected, you choose whether you want to do it or not. You volunteer. Systematic sample, a role is used to select members of a population. For instance, selecting every other person. Selecting every other person would be the rule to choose a systematic sample. A stratified sample, a population is divided into smaller groups that share a similar characteristic. A sample is then randomly selected from each group. A cluster sample is a population divided into groups called clusters, and then all of the members in one or more of the clusters are selected. A convenience sample, again, the name kind of implies what it means. A convenience sample, only members of a population who are easy or uh, easy or ready to be selected easy to reach are selected. And here are the rest of the vocab. Again, lots of vocab today. Hopefully these are not difficult. A biased is an error that results in a misrepresentation of a population. An unbiased sample is a representative of a population. A sample that overrepresents or underrepresents part of a population is a biased sample. An experiment imposes a treatment on individuals in order to collect data on their response to the treatment. An observational study observes individuals and measures variables without controlling the individuals or the environment. So observational study, you observe only. A survey is an investigation of one or more characteristics of a population. In a survey, every member of a sample is asked one or more questions. And a simulation uses a model to reproduce the conditions of a simulation or process so that the simulation outcomes closely matches the real world outcomes. And the last one, biased questions are questions that are flawed in a way that leads to inaccurate results. All right, words in math in everyday life, bias represents a person's tendency or inclination to believe particular things or behave in a particular way. A bias sample may not be representative of a population in part because the bias of the individuals that compose it. So bias is one of the big parts of our standards today. So make sure you understand that bias questions can lead to inaccurate results. All right, so this is your key idea. This is nice visual representation to help you remember. Self-selected, you can see the ones that are raising their hand. They are volunteering. They're choosing to be part of um, the sample. Uh, systematic, you can see every other one is highlighted. So a systematic one, there's some kind of rule that makes that happen. A stratified sample, a population is divided into smaller groups. And then a sample is randomly selected from each group. So you can see the different groups and then you can see how it's picked some people from each group. And then a cluster sample, a population is divided into groups called clusters. And then all the members or one or more of the clusters are selected. So you can see they've selected the middle cluster here. And then a convenient sample only chooses members of a population who are easily ready. So like everybody in the cafeteria. So you choose 
people in the cafeteria or you're in the library and you choose everybody in the library. That would be a convenience sample. All right, and then here's the experiment, observational study, survey, and simulation. We already went through those definitions. Those should be in your key ideas in your notes. So now let's look at a few examples. Example one, identifying types of samples. You want to determine whether students in your school like the new design of the school's website. Identify the type of samples described. A part, you list all the students alphabetically and choose every sixth student. All right, so if you remember, you look through the definitions because you're using a rule and you're selecting every sixth student, this would be called a systematic sample. All right, B part says, you mail questionnaires and use only the questionnaires that are returned. All right, so if you mail questionnaires and only choose the ones that are returned, that means the people decide whether they participate or not. So that one would be a self-selected. All right, C part says you ask all the students in your algebra class. All right, so if you ask all the ones in your algebra class, that's like asking the ones in the library or asking the ones in the gym or the cafeteria. If you ask all the ones in your algebra class, then that's a convenient sample because they're already there. So this one would be a convenience sample. And D part says you randomly select two students from each classroom. All right, so you think about the classrooms are already in groups, and then you select two students randomly from each group. So that would be called a stratified sample. And again, it's fine if you need to go back and refer to your definitions. Let's put that in red so we know those are the answers. And so that would be the different types of methods used here for looking for a new design for the school's website. Example two, identifying biased samples. Identify the type of sample and explain why the sample is biased. A part says a news organization asks its viewers to participate in an online poll about bullying. All right, so the viewers can choose whether they participate in the poll or not. Okay, it just says they ask their viewers to participate. So that would be a self-selected sample. And how would this be biased? Well, usually if people choose to participate in a poll about something, then they probably feel very strongly either about that subject in one way or the other. So if they choose to um, do a poll about bullying, they probably have a strong opinion about that subject. All right, B part says a computer science teacher wants to know how many students at a school most often access the internet. The teacher asks students in one of the computer science classes. All right, so if she asks students in a certain class, that is a convenience sample. And the bias could be that she is a computer science teacher and she's asking about access to the internet. So I would say the students um, in the school, it's not like it's not like a true opportunity for anybody to answer this. It's only her science, her computer science class. And um, and I would think students in a computer science class is going to have more opportunity to access the internet than students who are not in a computer class. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Let me see if I can write that out. All right, so that is uh, 
identifying bias of these two sample groups. Example three, you are a member of your school's yearbook committee. You want to poll members of the senior class to find out what the theme of the yearbook should be. There are 246 students in the senior class. Describe a method for selecting a random sample of 50 seniors to poll. All right, so there's a couple different ways to do this, and you may think of even some more. The first way is you could assign each student a number from 1 to 246, and then use a random generator, like a like technology, to randomly select numbers from the 246 numbers. And then whichever numbers you selected would be matched to those students' names. So you could use a random generator, random number generator for that. You also could put the numbers in just a bowl, and you could randomly select those numbers out of a bowl. And then once you select 50 numbers out of a bowl, see which names, again, are associated with those 50 numbers. It would take more time, but you could also just write each person's name on a piece of paper and select 50 names out, but um, that would take a little bit more time. But there are multiple ways to do this. But in order to be unbiased, you have to find a way to make it to where each student is equally likely one of those 50 samples. All right, so listed are the methods that I can think of, but you may think of even another method. Again, the idea is to make sure that you're choosing 50 seniors randomly from the 246 so that it is an unbiased sample.